Hello, my art pals. A friend of mine recently left a book at my studio, so of course we're going to look in it. So Sarah, FYI, I have your book here at the studio. <laughs> and this book today is The Quick Pose by Erin Meads. I thought this was really interesting because I'm not really super about quick poses. I tend to focus more on long poses and, you know, taking all the time to get lots of shading and accurate proportions and things like that. And my quick pose skills are not like at the forefront of what I do. So I thought it would be really cool to take a look in this book. And actually, I quite like this book. So I'm going to highlight to you uh, what this book is really about, who it might be good for, and we're going to take a look inside and see what it looks like. So I'm going to give you a good overview of this book, talk about who might enjoy this book or how you might use this book to further your own studies. And of course, we're going to take a peek inside and see some beautiful illustrations. Okay, so here's our book of the day. The Quick Pose, A Compilation of Gestures and Thoughts on Figure Drawing by Erin Meads. And I will say that this subtitle is very accurate to what you're getting here. A Compilation of Gestures and Thoughts on Figure Drawing. So this is not necessarily an instructional book per se, although as I look through it and I read the thoughts of the author, I will say that I can see how you can use this in a way, you know, kind of like a little bit of a course in order to improve your own quick pose drawings. So let's just take a look inside. And so here we go with the table of contents. There's a foreword and an introduction. And then the topics discussed are gesture, weight and balance, symmetry, foreshortening, light and shadow, heads, drapery, and there are some final thoughts. Now, the majority of this book, besides the foreword and introduction, is all gesture drawings or all, you know, short pose drawings. And the text is relatively short. So this is actually a little bit on the long side. And what the author seems to do is to offer some brief thoughts and ideas sometimes accompanied by a specific illustration, and how it can be applied in figure drawing or how you might think about figure drawing. And then there are a series of quick sketches after that that don't necessarily like obviously point out things to you. So it's not like a red line has highlighted the gesture here, but when you're looking and analyze, you can certainly understand how the gesture or how the concept of that section was applied. I love that this is a series of drawings that don't have a super high level of finish, you know? So it's not like this is something that took a really long time and all of it is flayed out. There's just a little bit of a gesture and a little bit of indication of the figure and then it's left. So I really like that, that there's just a huge variety of that in here. Again, there's a blurb about a concept and then a lot of examples of that concept, even just a study of a certain area of the leg. You can see that these appear to be from the same session. And obviously these are done with a lot of skill. So these are very well done and we can see the sketchy lines underneath. We can see how the artist began the drawing and what they did before they started to put down these confident lines. Now let's take a look at this, right? This section is about an area of focus and I'm just gonna read a little bit from what the author writes here. While it is important to process the figure as a whole, it is also good to have an area of focus as long as the rest of the figure is accounted for in some way. Sometimes a simple light line does the job. For example, the head and torso might be the chosen area of focus in a particular pose. In order to keep the legs and lower body at a level of finish that is slightly less than that of the head and torso, the legs might be chosen to be accounted for with a few 
long, light sweeping lines. And then the author continues, but you can clearly see that here, right? The area of focus was definitely on the torso and the lines were not completed. Even the back of the head was not completed. And here as well, there's like no chest or torso in there. You really have the feeling of the arms pushing and holding the figure up and then just a couple lines to indicate what the legs are doing. Now, I'm not going to say that I agree with what the artist says here that the legs need to be accounted for in some way. Uh, I often just will focus on an area and not draw the rest of the figure. And in fact, a little bit earlier, I think we saw a drawing of legs without the torso accounted for, for example. But I do think it's worth considering this point of view and how you might include some other areas. So even though I don't necessarily agree with everything, I think it's a really great idea to try, right? And to try to have a mixture of somewhere that you are including more information and then somewhere that you're not including information. And that's kind of what I think about all of the sections of this book. There are lots of wonderful small points made in here. Like here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. But there's a small simple idea presented without being too lengthy about it, with a simple illustration, and then with multiple examples to show you how that concept would work out in drawings. And I think that what would be really nice is to just study a concept at a time and leave it at that. So you could look at exaggeration and maybe, you know, for one week in your figure drawing course, before you head to your figure drawing course, you read this and kind of think about that idea and you look at the pictures, maybe choose a picture or two to copy on your own as practice and try to put that exaggeration into play and then head to your drawing session with that in mind. And maybe do a couple sessions like that and then once you feel like, yeah, I've been exaggerating a little bit and I'm enjoying that, you know, then go on to the next concept and implement that one. Now there are also discussions in here about the way that classes tend to work, how to use your materials, how to use the side of Conte in order to create value, how to approach drawing, and then back into concepts like weight and balance. I like that there are a lot of specifics in here you know, about how to find where the weight is and how to balance the figure. So although the concepts are kept really short, little bit by little bit, you can go deeper and find out more about the concept. So it's really incremental. There's a really big variety of types of drawings that you're going to find in here. Everything from these just really basic unfinished drawings to things that look more rendered and more figured out toward the end of the book. Kind of like an actual figure drawing session where you start with 30 second or one minute poses and then you end with some longer poses that might be 30 to 40 minutes depending on the session that you're going to. Happily, there is a section about foreshortening, which is so challenging for so many artists. There are a lot of great foreshortening examples shown, as well as concepts for how to understand foreshortening in general. And you can definitely see how the artist used these concepts to show the depth in the foreshortening, even in unfinished areas of drawings. Now we start to get into some of these drawings, which must be a longer pose with really beautiful rendering in the light and shadow. You have small paragraphs that gradually get you into the idea of light and shadow. And then you get further into concepts about edges and the different types of shadows. I think it's really good that the abstract forms of the shadows are emphasized before getting into the nuance and all the different parts of the light and shadow. 
the information that's being shared here about light and shadow is also really focused on when you have a limited time frame because instead of getting into absolutely every detail of the light and shadow there's focus on the abstract shape and then small areas that you can add darkness or to add a little bit of mid-tone in order to quickly get a feeling of form. So if we look at this sketch right here, which is pretty quick, we can see that this edge on the shadow helps to create a third value and turn that form without it being something that takes a long time to do. In addition to the bulk of the book focusing on figures, we also get some information on heads and especially the types of heads that would be included in a figure drawing, which are not going to be overly detailed. There's a really helpful discussion of foreshortening in terms of the head. And of course, tons and tons of examples. Finally, there's also a section on drapery, which can be so incredibly helpful, especially if you end up at a session with a clothed model. You can see the way that this artist has shown the drapery with really minimal lines. And there's an in-depth discussion of the different kinds of folds and draping that you will find so that you can understand symbolically how to represent different types of fabrics quickly without getting drawn into the details and taking too long. So you can see that we can really feel, for example, the jeans here because there's a point of compression and just some simple lines showing the way that the fabric goes from those points. Now this is kind of a small thing, but I just wanted to go back and point out something here that I really like. Um, this even happens on the front of the book, but in these pictures of the drawings, you can see smudges. Uh, so the background here hasn't been cleaned up, either by the artist erasing everything or by some digital means. So you get the sense that there are little areas where, you know, maybe the artist hand kind of mushed some charcoal or something got spread around or maybe even just from drawings going into drawers or you know moving around in notebooks that there's there's some of this stuff happening so every now and then i get the feeling like oh no i've gotten some charcoal on this um, i need to clean it off but no it's right there on the page and i like that this is a book that you get to see that messy unpolished side of things with really incredible drawings. I'm not saying that to put down the drawings at all, but it's just so nice to see something in a raw format that hasn't been polished and prepared like, you know, what you see on Instagram of just the highlight reels, right? I'll also point out that in the back here, it says author Aaron Meads defines the quick pose as figure drawings that can be executed in less than 20 minutes. The majority of images in this book took less than five minutes to draw. Their brevity encourages more dynamic poses from the model and challenges the artist to make quick decisions about what to include and even more significantly, what not to include. So there you have it. I hope that you have enjoyed this flip through and review of The Quick Pose by Erin Meads. I definitely enjoyed looking through this book. I'm going to enjoy looking through it again. And I think I am going to go ahead and study some of the suggestions for quick pose drawing as well and shake up my own quick pose practice. If you have a favorite figure drawing book that you would like me to review, just leave a link in the comments and I will check it out. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you again soon.